Let's change it like that. I was just playing with the mod wheel now. Okay, how do you like the sound? What's up everyone, I'm Busyless and welcome to my channel which is all about music production, sound design, Ableton Live and all things related. And you know what it is today? Today is the Sweet Sound Sunday. And what is the Sweet Sound Sunday you ask me? Well, Sweet Sound Sunday is a series dedicated to a sound design and sound design only. And in this series I will be creating some weird and fun and really nice sounding patches in different sense, like Ableton Drifts or pigments or whatever I'm gonna find on my hard drive or download and you will be able to learn a little bit from my experiments. And today's Sweet Sun Sunday is not gonna be sweet at all. It's gonna be more like a marshmallow dipped in a Tabasco sauce. It's gonna be sharp, it's gonna be weird, but it's still gonna love it. Follow me. <laughs> Let's grab some headphones and we will be doing this. Sounds interesting, it sounds thick and uh, I really love it. I'm talking about this bass in particular, which is a pad bass or you can use it as a regular bass. It is really distorted. And the most fun part about this is that distortion is taking place inside a drift synthesizer. It is also added a little bit later with a saturator, but the most tasteful part of the distortion is actually happening inside the drift. And I'm gonna show you how to make that in literally just a couple of minutes. Okay, so come here closer a little bit. Okay, so we are here in Ableton and let me grab a fresh instance of the Drift Synthesizer. So I have it in my favorites. So let's grab a new one. Let's hide these things here for the moment. This is a fresh Drift Synthesizer here and it does sound like this. Okay, nothing exciting, but let's grab a Wave Observer. We can drop it in here. And thanks to this plugin, we will be able to see how the waveform looks like. So let's change it to the waveform mode. Change the duration. Okay, now we see the waveform that we are producing. Okay, cool. Now, the first things first, we're gonna keep most of the settings here as they are at the moment. We're just gonna change the oscillator number two to a square wave. That sounds like this. Interesting waveform. Now let's change the frequency a little bit of the filter because that is a little bit too high, around 500 something, 30 hertz. That should be really okay. Okay, perfect. Now let's add a little bit of resonance and change the filter type to type two. So the 24 decibels per octave. Okay, cool. Now let's detune a oscillator number two. And let's see how it sounds like. Let's do this so. See how the waveform changes when we detune them. Fascinating. Well, that's basically most of this part actually done. And now let's go to the LFO, the most fun part of it. So we have the LFO. We want to change it to the ratio mode like this. And uh, what does it do? Well, it changes the ratio and frequency according to the keys that we play by the multiplier of this number here. So just not gonna basically multiply anything. It's gonna be one. That's gonna be four, five, six, anything. But it doesn't change anything at the moment. So we want to change one thing with it. We want to change the frequency of the filter. So let's go to the LFO here. We can go plus or minus, doesn't really matter. Let's go to minus 16. And in this case, some of the parameters really do matter if they are really precisely, as I said here. So I will point to what is really important so you can follow along and just set the same values just to achieve the same result. Now let's listen to what it does now. So this has gone a little bit dirtier because this LFO in the ratio mode is modifying the frequency of the filter. And if we move that ratio, let's listen to this now. So you see that on the even numbers like two, one and a half, one, the sound gets a little bit more uh, stable. When we go to like uneven number like let's say 225, it's more sharp and distorted. Well, okay. 
Okay, so I found a really good number is to get really close to the even value like 20, but to add a little bit to it. So let's type on the keyboard 2.02 .02. and let's listen to it now. It is a little bit distorted, isn't it? Okay, so let's leave it like that at the moment and we're gonna see why do we need it to be like so. Now, what else is important is that we want to modulate that rate. And this is a thing that has been suggested to me by one of the viewers and his name is the Engineer. Thank you for that. And uh, let's see what we can do with it. So let's go to the envelope number two and let's design it a little bit. So let's drop the DK, actually it's longer the DK, let's drop the sustain. Let's add a little bit of release and let's, how, how will we do it? We go to the mod matrix and then we choose that envelope two will be modulating LFO rate. That's the one. And now let's, if you press the button, nothing changes because we need to add how much we want to modulate. Let's go like, so 50%. That's already very interesting. I kind of like it. Okay. And we can play with the, with these parameters here. That's interesting. But now this envelope has a secret feature, which is a cycling envelope. And in this cycling envelope, we can basically make that type of cycling. We can change the rate. This is getting really interesting. But now the whole trick is that we will choose a ratio mode for the envelope too as well. Let's go a little bit crazy and that doesn't sound really good at the moment. So let's change the ratio to the minimum values of 0 0.25. And now that's why it is really important to set the exact values in the FM synthesis just to achieve the same results. And really tiny decimal point can make a lot of a difference. So the most important three things is that ratio 2.02. .02. This ratio of the cycling envelope to 0 0.25. And when we go to the mod matrix, this has to be on 21% exactly. So if you can use your mouse to do, if not just click on it, type 21, enter. Now let's listen to how it sounds now. Okay, I'm going to show you what happens when you change this value. It gets really dirty. Like it's really good on 27% as well. But I found 21 to be the best suiting me. Okay, well that's basically most of the sound done. Let's go back to the drift uh, oscillator section. Let's change the slide here. so. This is modulating the shape of the oscillator number one waveform. We can add a little bit to add some more grit. We can add a little bit actually, yeah. And we want to modulate that with an envelope two, so cycling envelope, as it is that we won't be touching anything now. How much we want to modulate? Well, 5% is okay. We can add a little bit more. 7.8 is also really good. Now we can play with the tilt. That doesn't really change too much. It changes character of the sound. Let's listen to it now. You can just basically set this value to what you prefer, what you like. And now we want to make a pad sound out of it. So we go to the envelope number one, which is a amp envelope as well. And we want to modify the attack. So let's make the attack a little bit longer. Let's say like a one and a half second. Maybe not that slow. Let's uh, get down the DK, run two seconds, sustain 50%, 54%, that's fine. And a little bit longer release. So we have like a pad sound, really nice. But now let's make the sound even bigger. What can we do? We go to the mode and let's change it to a stereo version. So we're gonna get a little bit of the stereo spread. Let's uh, add it to like 20%. In this value, you can actually set whatever you like, whatever sounds best to you. And let's add the drift as is a drift uh, synthesizer. We want to have a little bit more of the drift. Let's say 30, 40% will be okay. We 
Okay, let's make it a little bit louder for now. Okay, cool. And then we might want to drive the filter a little bit, so add a little bit more of the distortion. So let's uh, go to like zero decibels on the oscillator number one. Let's add oscillator number two as well. We can add a little bit of a noise. Okay, that's cool. And we can utilize our mode wheel. So mode wheel will basically add a high pass filter, but not 80%. Let's make it like 40% and let's listen to what it does now. Can add a little bit more. It's getting a little bit squelchy. I really like it. Okay, uh, let's add like 20 hertz here. That's cool. Now, as you can see, the distortion is really huge in this patch that we made inside the drift. We didn't even add any saturation yet. Let's do it now. Let's hide this, this won't be needed anymore, and let's uh, play a little bit with some effects just to make the sound a little bit bigger, and let's add a little bit of the saturation anyway, just to make it even dirtier and even more harsh and painful. My idea first was to add a little bit of a ping pong delay, so let's search for delay. I will try to use the most basic plugins that everyone has, even in the intro version of the Ableton, so let's add a delay here. We can... Uh, yeah, we can hide it. So, ping pong, will not touch anymore. Let's listen now. So it's bouncing from one ear to another. It's adding a little bit of the wetness of the delay. Okay. That's cool. Now let's uh, add a little bit of the saturation then. Why not? I'm looking for everything by pressing Command F or Control F if you're on Windows and it's really easy to type in whatever you basically want and it's going to show in this little browser here. So Saturator, there it is. So I found this to be really nice if we add like something really hard, like Hardcore and then let's go down with the output quite a lot, minus 8 decibels and let's try to add the drive. This is getting a little bit loud, which reminds me to slap in a limiter at the end just to protect your ears and just to protect your gear. We don't want to get any sounds that are too loud that will be hurting our ears. So let's press Command F, limiter, let's slap in the limiter and uh, seating minus one, minus 1.5, that is really okay. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now let's add a little bit of a reverb to make it more dreamy and like more wet, as I say. Okay, find reverb. Just a regular reverb would do if you have convolution reverb or any other type of reverb like Valhalla, that would be even more saucy. Uh, but let's add a regular reverb. We not change much and let's go down with the wetness here and let's uh, add a little bit more of the decay. Let's add a low cut so we don't get the low frequencies reverberated. And size to like 140%, that should be good. We can add a little bit more of the chorus and let's listen to it now. This is the sound dome. You can of course play with it more as long as you like. You can add some phaser, flangers, whatever you prefer. In whatever order you prefer, basically, this is just up to your imagination and to your liking. And now we want to group it all together. We just press first plugin, shift last plugin, and then press command G or control G to group. And there we have it. That's our group here. We can name it. Dirty Drift Base Pad. Now we can uh, map some of the macro controls. Let's do it quickly. So what do we want to map is for sure we want to map a some reverb and echo stuff and uh, distortion as well. So let's press map. Let's go to a reverb dry wet to the knob number one. Now let's go to the echo. I mean delay dry wet. 
macro number two, saturation, uh, let's uh, map the drive to the nut number three, but we will not be going minus 36. We can go from like, uh, let's say 225 to maybe six, maximum seven. Okay, so it's not that hard. And then we also want to map this little, that's the frequency modulation by LFO. We want to map that to macro number four. And then uh, we'll see what it does, but it's not, we're not gonna go minus 100%. We're gonna go like uh, minus 20, minus 40, let's say, to zero. Now we can type in zero, it's gonna be faster. Okay, now let's rename these knobs here. So this will be, come on, our uh, reverb. This will be delay. This is drive. This is sauce. And you'll see why. And now let's uh, hide the four unneeded ones. Let's hide this. Let's hide this. And uh, let's save it. Dirty drift base pad. Okay, perfect. I will add it to my favorite ones or to my presets. Uh, the and now let's play a little bit. Can go down with the reverb and delay. Drive. That's the sauce. So that changes the little parameter here. Let's see. Yeah, that kind of hurts a little bit, but it's really nice. Let's, let's change it like that. I was just playing with the mod wheel now. Okay, so that was really cool and really fast. We can actually make this sound in literally four or five minutes. And if you want to learn more about how Drift works and about every single function inside the Drift synthesizer, you really want to see this video next, which is my tutorial on how to use Drift. And uh, I guess we'll see you there. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also check the links in the description box down below for some cool gear and cool stuff and cool deals for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Cheers.